differentials. Are you having a good day? Was that a good gear pulling up or is it a little more good? Okay, good, thank you. Sorry, it's, it's hard to, you want to correct, but you don't want to come off maybe. So, so. All right, so find the differential expression analytically by finding the derivative and separating the differentials. First and foremost, the question of the day is, okay, we're showing differentials today. What is that? What's the difference? Well, remember back to the first days of the derivative when we said here's a curve, f of x, and if I wanted the slope between two points, this, this side, that's truly the change between that point and that point y sub. So that's true change in y between the points. And this is the difference between the two x's. So that's true change in x. But as you, as the points get closer, then you start to get a tiny, tiny triangle. So imagine that point stayed, but this point got moved so close that it was practically next to. Okay? This microscopic delta y, micro delta y is called dy. It's a tiny delta y. dy is Tiny delta y, tiny, 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 so close together that they don't even look like two points. They look like one point. So this side of the triangle is obviously dx. And if I talk little dy over little dx, that's change in y over change in x. That's slope, right? What did they do? Oh, sorry, we really discussed it. Here. <laughs> Who's that piece of? Oh, that looks like fun. Mm -hmm. Darn it. That's way more fun. Oh, it's like so many of you are in step. Okay, sorry, I'm easily distracted. I was the kid, and so I, I, when I see some of you in class, and you're like, oh, look, there's a fox. That was, that was me. Um, so back to focus here. Here we go. So the fundamental idea of differentials is that dy dx, the tiny change in that triangle, is the idea of the derivative. And that's really just a mixture of the two notations for the derivative. They both mean the derivative. These are differentials. Differentials Differentials are tiny changes in y. So if I say, hey, what's a differential? Then you say it's a tiny change in y or a tiny change in x. You with me? Okay. So uh, the fundamental idea of differentials is that uh, the ratio of change is the derivative Today, though, we're going to split the differentials just by just using the algebra. If I multiply dx over, then dy, or a microscopic change in y, is the derivative times a little change in x. That, if you were going to go to sleep for the rest of the period, then this is the part that you would definitely want to say, well, at least I got that part, because that is the big idea of the day. All right. Now then, uh, depending on the variables, Oops, I spelled variable wrong, my bad. Um, the work might look different. If I said find the differentials below using the appropriate variable, then this would be what dy is, and I need to take the derivative and then multiply the dx over. Now, if you want to do that in two steps, dy dx is this derivative, and then move the dx over, you can. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to say the derivative is this, and I move the dx over at the same time. Boom, there's my answer. You follow? So what is the, the derivative goes here? What's the derivative? Cosine of x plus cosine of y. Cosine of y plus cosine of x. Plus three of the x. This might help to write it as a power before derivative. What is this 3x to what power? 3x to the negative 1 half. So the derivative is? Negative, do I, so this comes down to negative 3 halves x to the, drop it by 1, does that make it positive 1 half or negative 3 halves? Negative 3 halves. Are you with me? Okay, let's go to the next one. The one below it, rather than next to it. 
the lowest end each time the, the variables could change. Y and X are by far the most common, but it could be anything. So in this case, the differential we'll be looking for is not dy, but dx. And again, we need to find the derivative. And then we really are going to take ds dt and move over the dt. So over here will be the dependent variable, independent variable differential dt in this case. And what is the derivative of 3 over t? Is it 3 log d? That's the antiderivative. What is the derivative of 3 to the negative 1? Show me over here, Trevor. Negative 3, t to the negative 2, or negative 3 over t squared, is part 2. Do you agree? What about the derivative of 4t? 4 and the derivative of 1? 0. So there's ds dt. Make sure it's in parentheses, or ds rather. Separated the differentials. You're good. Do you feel like you can do that? Prove it. Do the two on the right, please. Okay, Mr. Sony, what do you say for the upper one? I like, well done. And then times the dx on the bottom side, right? Do you agree? Okay, uh, what about the next one, Jim? The, did you say the R? Okay, awesome. Look at there, the derivative of volume is just isn't that kooky? And that's a first calculus that we don't even know. Okay, um, now then, for small delta x's, t dy is a pretty darn good estimate of delta y. That's the next idea, but I guess this is kind of just in the wrong order. But this is the big idea of the day. True change in y can be estimated by the differential dy, and we just found out that the derivative or the differential dy is the derivative times the little change in the independent variable, right? So let's gradually get to how this can be used. Right now it's just a bunch of symbols, which is nice. All right, so let's say I gave you this parabola function. If I said find the true change delta y as x changes from 2 to 2.1, then the true change in y is What's f at 2.1 and what's f at 2? And what's the difference? You know, in going from an x of 2 to an x of 2.1, y must have changed. How much? So would you slap that in the old calculator? Uh, you think it's worth uh, defining the function in the graphing menu or not? Nah, just type it in the way it is. Type it in. Tough call. It's tough call. I'm gonna define it just because just because I'm a contradictory kind of guy. What was the equation? Two x squared minus three x. Okay, and then if I did f. 2.1 Is it that clean or is my calculator really rounding? Is that clean? Yeah. That's surprising to me. Okay. 
Uh, so I get 5.2. Now that's the actual change. I don't know what this graph looks like, but that's truly what the difference is from one to the other. So what we did there is actually took two points on the curve and found this, 0 0.52. You follow me? Okay. Now differentials do a nice job of estimating if delta x is small. So let's start here. If I want to use dy to estimate delta y, then the first thing I need to find is dy. dy is what? Okay, so remember it's that we just said that it's the derivative, 4x minus 3 times some change in the independent variable dx. See? All right. So in this case, then, dy is, so the first question that students have, right, they go is, which x do I put in? Do I put in a 2 or do I put in a 2.1? Uh, you put in the original x for x. And so I use 2. I started at 2. I found the rate of change at its original point 2. And put that into the function. What's dx? dx represents a change in x. So how much am I changing x by? 0 0.1. I'm going from 2 to 2.1. That's a change in x of 0 0.1. Changed x by 0 0.1. All right. So if I calculate that, that's what? Uh, 5 times 0 0.1 or 0 0.5. You can see that they're pretty close. They're tangent line. This really, when you do differentials, you're doing a derivative at a certain point and trying to extend it to a point nearby. So once you get, if you are with your eyes wide open or you really see calculus, then you might say, gosh, this is almost the same as the tangent line. It's a pretty darn good estimate of a point nearby. And there is a ton of overlap between differentials and tangent lines. Um, so the change estimate would be about 0 0.5, and that's pretty close to the true change of 0.52. You with me? Try one on your own. I just lost all my work. to rely on you because my calculator crashed the part A. Are you done or do you know the name? Okay. So for true change, you're actually saying what happens when you put the two values in and what's the difference between the y values? So give me three decimals of part A. 0. 0.025? Zero Did I lose that? Okay, or you possibly could have a different third depending on what you want in the function, so we're in the right ballpark. Okay, so dy is the derivative times a little dx, and so what is the derivative? One over two root x at what value? At an x of four or 4.1? Four, four, and what's dx? Gosh, sorry. Uh, what's delta x? 0 0.1. So I get something like 1 fourth of 0 0.1. Uh, I don't know if you use decimals or fractions, but isn't 0 0.25 times 0 0.1 something like uh, 0 0.025? Okay. So that's pretty darn good. Follow? 
That has to do with the fact that square root changes so slowly, whereas squares change quicker, that you're going to get less error when it's a slow change function. All right. That then is a good start. Let's go to applications of differentials. Okay, cool. All right, applications of this. Uh, this can be used in a lot of science and business applications. I have one of each here or both here. So if I measure the edges of a cube, and you don't need a picture really to do this in the homework, but I'm just going to show it. And I see that each edge is 8 centimeters. But my ruler has a real bent up corner. So I'm not real confident. I feel like it could be off by about a millimeter or one-tenth of a centimeter. Now, surely then if I use that possible error measure to calculate something else, then I'm going to get what's called propagated error. If you build a calculation on something that's poorly measured, you're going to get more error. And in the case of the function, you get a ton of error if it's exponential. So the idea is, by being off a little in the side measurements, how much can I be off a little in a volume calculation? That's the big idea of the problem. You follow? All right. Now, if I, the true, the true um, error, excuse me, I actually have to bring you donuts to this. Any money I'll work. I'll toast or something. True error. All right, so the true error would be the actual change in volume. So maybe something like the volume when it was 8.1 minus the volume when it was 8. I could calculate that and figure out, you know, what's the cheap difference between the two volumes if I'm off by a tenth of a centimeter, right? But the question says use differentials instead to estimate it. Now, I can be confident that that's going to be a pretty good estimate because the difference between these two, the delta, in this case, x, is pretty small. You follow me? All right, so the idea is that delta v can be approximated by dv. And the big idea of calculus is that dv is v prime d. Let's go here. Uh, let's say volume is x cubed, yeah? Then if I take the differential, the derivatives and split it, then isn't dv equal to v prime d what? x, okay? We talked in the first part about when you find a differential, it's the derivative times the differential of the independent variable. You follow? All right, now let's get a, that's kind of the thesis of the problem. Now let's get in a little more detail. What's V prime? 3x squared. It's pretty common that right here, you're going to write an evaluation bar. In other words, you're going to say, I'm not just finding the derivative. I'm going to find the derivative at some point. At what point? At 8. Okay, again, it's at the starting point. And then the dx. How much am I changing x by? 0 0.1. All right. When I multiply them, I get 3 times 64 times 0 0.1. No, you don't need a calculator. What is 64 times 3? What's 60 times 3? 24 times 3? And what's 80 plus 4? And what's 192 times a tenth? 19.2. What are the units? What did I just find? I estimated the change in the volume. So what should the units look like? Centimeters cubed. That, to me, shows the power of a cube. By being just a tenth off here, I get a volume that could be off as much as 19 cubic centimeters. Think about it like this. If I had a little coating here, if I was just this much off, it's this much off in every direction. And so that little red outer coating for this would have a volume of a, about 19 extra cubic centimeters around the original. You follow? All right. All right. Uh, if I used differential assessment, how far I, I could be by using my measure to calculate the surface area. Surely by being off a little in the edge, the volume would be off, but also the surface area would be off, right? 
So tell me, first of all, what's the equation that I'm going to talk about? If it's surface area of a cube, give me one way to find surface area of that bad boy. Come on. Two area of the base plus, OK, that's one way to go. And if it's a cube, let's simplify that. What's the area of the base? x squared. And what's the perimeter of the base? 4x. And what's the height? x. And so what is the surface area? Tell me why that makes sense, 6x squared. Because one side is x squared, and there are six sides. OK, so either way, you get there. But I, if you just start it, you save a lot of time. OK, now, that said, the idea that I want you to communicate is the true change in surface area, I'm going to call it A, can be approximated by differential what? DA. And DA is equal to A prime times DX. Okay. The differential is equal to the derivative times the differential. Variable, right? Um, now you go a little more specific. You say, okay, person reading this, here's the derivative. The derivative is a is 6x squared, and then a prime is 12x. And I say, all right, and I don't just want the derivative generally, I want it at 8. And how much did I change the side x by? 0.1. So it's 12 times 8. 96 times a tenth, 9.6. And what are the units? Centimeters squared here because it's an air, an area. All right. You follow me? Let's see how you can do here. Try this one on your own. And then maybe it's too early or maybe it'll go great. Please be positive over it. It's an A and a B. Sorry, did you? I assume you saw that. Calculus last year, it doesn't hurt my feelings that while you're waiting in there, you can sit to see a problem. You better make darn sure that you know what I'm teaching you. But that's, that's not a pencil. Okay, let's start at least A and make sure you're on the right track. So, what's the equation if they're talking for A circumference? Circumference is P 
2 pi r. We could go pi d, but um, it feels like uh, they talked about radius, so it's more logical to go 2 pi r. So then the next case is getting the differential. We're going to estimate the true change in c with dc. And what is dc? The derivative or the differential dc is c prime times d f r. Okay? All right, so cool. What is c prime? 2 pi, and normally I would say add an r of this, but does it really matter here? No, it dropped out in this case. And what is dr? 0 0.1. And so I get something like uh, 0 0.2 pi. And what are the units on circumference? Centimeters. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. Getting off, uh, that's 0.6. That's cool. All right. So by the same token, in B, what do you use for an equation? Okay, and then you said, big idea of the day. Tell me what to say as far as estimating change. True change in area delta A is approximately equal to dA, which is a differential. And how do you find a differential? A prime times the differential of the other variable, in this case dr, all right? What is a prime? 2 pi r, and at what r will you evaluate that? 7, and what's the r again? 0 0.1, so I get 2 times pi times 7 times 0 0.1. What's 14 times 0 0.1? 1.4 pi, and the units on that? Centimeters squared. Okay. Let's talk a business calc problem, and then we'll call it good. The revenue of selling n items is r dollars, and the revenue function is given by this. All right, so how much money you collect, not profit. Profit and revenue look different. The money you collect is given by this function that depends on n. Uh, would you tell me how would I find the revenue if 12 items are sold? Well, that's not a calculus problem. That's just a basic. Do you know how to read a formula and approach it? So how do I find the revenue when 12 items are sold? Plug in what? N equal 12. And so revenue when 12 items are sold is 12 times 50 plus 2 times 12 minus 10 or 12 times 50 plus 4. 12 times 54, what's 54 times 10? 540, what's 54 times 2? 108, what's 50, 540 plus 108? 648, and that's revenue, so the units are dollars. It's, uh, I guess it could be lots of money units, but they did say dollars. You follow me on part A? All right, now B is where the calculus comes in. Um, what if you sold, instead of 12, you sold one more unit? Now, if you sold one more unit, that would change how much money you would take in, and that would be delta R. I want to estimate the change in how much money you take in, the change in revenue, by a differential dr. So R, first of all, you find an equation relating R and N, and do you agree it's above, yay? Okay, um, and it says product rule, but I don't think you'll need the product rule here. Um, unless you know the product rule, so, all right, so now let's talk about what you're estimating. We're estimating delta R with dr, yeah? And how will you find dr? R prime dn equals, all right, now, R prime, um, that is a product, and you don't know how to do a product, so would you allow me to clean this up a little? Do you agree that I could distribute inside and get 50 plus 2n minus 20? And 50, nope, 30 plus 2n. Are you cool? Are you with me, people? 30 plus 2n. And if I then distribute, I get 30n plus 2n squared. 
You better believe if you ever work up on your Mac, I'll turn off the automatic on the start button. So. All right. So the revenue function is 30n plus 2n squared. So what's the derivative? 30 plus 4n. And at what point will I evaluate it? You go back to the original point in time. So that's 12. Okay. So n equal 12. And what's the dn? The change is d times the delta, small delta. And you're changing by one more unit. Could that be negative? Yeah. How would the function read if I wanted you to a negative one here? Yeah. What's the change in revenue if I did one less? So read carefully though. That can be negative or positive. In this case, it's positive. So what about when n equals 12, what's the derivative come out to? 78 times 1 n. By doing one more object or creating one more object, I will sell or, sorry, increase my revenue by 78 dollars. You with me? Okay, cool. That should do it. Questions on last night's homework. Were there replacements? Yes, there were. So let's give you the replacements. Do you feel like it would be reasonable to at least expect me to post the replacement answers every night on my website? I agree. That would be reasonable. I should do that. I will try my bestest to, in the future, post all replacement answers at the very minimum. Okay. So let me copy those in real quick. Do do do. How the new rational function e problems go? Do they go great? Do you find they're the ultimate tedium and you hate them? <coughs> I got to be honest with you, I don't like them much myself, but they are good problems. So many replacements. I went ham, as Harper would say. I think she says that. Okay. Okay. Uh, shall we talk about this guy here? Do you agree it has a hole at two? Did you find? Did you find the y of the whole? I think when x is 2, y goes to 5 halves? 5 halves. Okay? You have vertical asymptotes at just 2. No, yes. Just 2. And, oops, nope, sorry. How could I have a whole and an asymptote? That's ridiculous. Negative two, there's a two. And an x-intercept at negative three. We uh, what's the end behavior? What is it approach? Y equals two is the end behavior. For the outsides. And the sign test should yield something like this. Is that right? Okay, cool. All right. Uh, find the equation of the tangent line, too. Uh, did you put in the point 1? Uh, what do you get there when you put in 1? 2, negative 1, negative 2 thirds? Help me, people. Did you get the point neg 1, negative 2 thirds? If you put 1 into that equation. Wow. Thanks for that help. 2 times negative 1 over negative 3. I feel like that's, oh, is it positive 2 thirds? Yes. Okay, positive 2 thirds. All right, cool. Um, I know it's a calculator. You still have to communicate. This is what I did to find the tangent slope. So what did you use your calculator to do to get the tangent slope? How do you get tangent slope? Find the derivative at the point. 
I know you're using your calculator to do it. That doesn't excuse you from communicating. You still have to say the slope is found by using the derivative. You don't know how to take the derivative on that. That's quotient rule with chain. Uh, it's just not happening. So use your calculator to do that. Can somebody use your calculator to find the slope then? Zero point, or no, I don't even know that. I'm just making that up. Maddie, you had it. What is it, Maddie? Oh, darn it. Four ninths? Straight up four ninths? Cool. Okay, so the equation then is y minus two-thirds equals four ninths x minus one, and done. Tangent line. Okay, please read carefully. Some problems say find the tangent slope. That's just the derivative. Some say find the equation of the tangent line. That's a whole equation of line. Uh, this, this is the derivative of what function? Cubed of x at what point? At 8 or 2? 8. That's 1 over 3 cube roots of x squared at 8. So hopefully something like 1 over 3 times 2 squared or 1 plus. Cool? What's this the derivative of? What function? 8x to the 8. At what point? 1 and a half. The derivative of 8x to the 8th is 64x to the 7th at 1 and a half. 64 over 2 to the 7th is this. Okay. I know I have a record of saying I'll put the answers up at lunch, but I'll try and put the answers up at lunch. Uh, does anybody want me to try and work some and put them up and try to replace them? 24? Okay, 18? Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Okay. Let's see. 